Put simply, a character set is the list of characters that your computer can understand. But there is, of course, more to it than that. All computer scientists, and particularly programmers, should understand the fundamental principles of character sets, character encodings, and Unicode. Only then can they develop computer systems that will work with text in any language. Once upon a time, the only characters that computer scientists cared much about were English letters, digits 0 to 9, and a handful of punctuation symbols. There was a system for representing these characters called ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. ASCII could represent every character on the standard keyboard and a few unprintable control characters using a number between 0 and 127. Numbers 0 to 31 represented unprintable control characters. For example, 7, Bell, made your computer beep. Number 12, form feed, caused your printer to eject the current sheet of paper. And number 13, carriage return, was originally designed to move the printing head of your teleprinter back to the left margin without moving down to the next line. Later it was assigned to the enter key on your keyboard to signal that you've finished typing a line. It's useful to know ASCII values in hexadecimal and in binary, so ASCII tables are often presented in a format similar to this. You can see how each binary value consists of seven binary digits. With seven bits, there are two to the power seven, that's 128 possible combinations of ones and zeros. So, to uniquely identify all of the 128 ASCII codes in binary, 7 bits is just enough. Notice that the digits 0 to 9 are not encoded in pure binary. In fact, the base 10 values for these binary codes range from 48 to 57. A computer can't do any mathematics with these codes as they stand. When you type the character 9 on the keyboard, for example, the ASCII code 0111001 is sent for processing not the number 9 in binary. Notice, however, that the rightmost four bits of the binary ASCII code for character 9 is indeed the number 9 in pure binary. In fact, this applies to all of the digits. This means that software can easily convert the ASCII code for a digit into a binary number by setting the three bits on the left to zero, if the context of the input so dictates. Here's another rather convenient format which is often used for an ASCII table. The same 128 characters are here, but they're arranged rather cleverly. Look at the capital letter K. It's in row 4 and column B. 4B is the hexadecimal value of the 7-bit ASCII code for the capital letter K. As it happened, most early computers worked with groups of 8 bits, not 7. A group of 8 bits became known as a byte. 2 to the power 8 is 256, so in a single byte you can have up to 256 different combinations of 1s and zeros. This meant if you used one byte to represent each character, not only could you cater for everything on the keyboard and all of the control characters, you'd still have 128 combinations to spare. In the mid-1980s, computer manufacturers began to make use of this extended range for their own purposes. For example, the IBM PC had something that came to be known as the OEM character set. This provided some accented characters for European languages and various simple shapes that could be used to produce primitive graphics on text-only printers and visual display units. The problem was that different organisations such as Adobe, Hewlett-Packard, DEC, Apple and Microsoft were all using this extended character set to do their own thing. There was no formal standard. Ultimately, there were many, many variants. Microsoft and IBM each made dozens. These became known as code pages. Hence, the so-called extended ASCII character set was platform dependent. It varied from one computer to another and from one operating system to another. 
character encodings conflicted with each other. Different encodings often used the same number for different characters, or different numbers for the same character. To make matters worse, the World Wide Web came along. Computers, especially servers, needed to support lots of different encodings. This meant that when data moved from one computer to another, it ran the risk of corruption. In 1991, the Unicode standard was published, and that changed everything. The idea was to create a single character set in which every possible character had a unique number, no matter what platform, device, application or language. Unicode is developed and promoted by a non-profit organisation called the Unicode Consortium. Members of the consortium include organisations like Microsoft, Apple, Adobe, Google, IBM, Netflix, Facebook and many more. As already stated, the first design goal of Unicode was to have a unique number for each and every character. Each number is known as a code point. One of the biggest misconceptions about Unicode is that it's a simple 16-bit code or even a 32-bit code. A naive approach would have been to simply allocate 16 bits to each and every character. This would have allowed for 65,536 different characters. Indeed, the designers of Unicode could have decided to use 32 bits instead, allowing for over 4 billion characters. But this approach would have been problematic. For a start, ASCII was still very much around, and one of the design goals of Unicode was to maintain backwards compatibility with ASCII, and as many of the old code pages as possible. Another design goal was space efficiency. Most English characters, like the capital letter A for example, need only 7 bits to be encoded in ASCII, 8 bits at the very most in extended ASCII. If Unicode was to use 32 bits to encode the letter A, or indeed any other traditional ASCII character, then three of those four bytes would contain nothing but zeros. The letter A would take up four times more space in memory than it previously did, four times more space when saved to disk, and four times longer to move from one place to another. Not ideal. Another problem was that many existing computer systems recognised a string of 8 bits as a signal that there was no more data on the way. If more bytes than necessary were used to encode our capital letter A, then data transmission systems would get confused when interpreting streams of characters. To meet the design goals, a rather elegant solution was devised. The Unicode Transformation Format. UTF-8. Instead of encoding each character with the same fixed number of bits, some characters are encoded with more bits than others. Old-style ASCII characters still make use of 8 bits, so this is still a capital A. The fact that this character encoding begins with a zero is an indication to any software processing it that the character is encoded with only one byte. By convention, a Unicode value is normally written with four hexadecimal digits, with a capital U and a plus sign at the start. So the code point for a capital letter A is written like this. U plus 0041. For any character in Arabic, Hebrew and most European languages, two bytes are used. The first of these two bytes begins with the control bits, 110, indicating that the character is encoded with two bytes. The second of the two bytes begins with the control bits 10, indicating that this byte is a continuation and it's encoding for the same character. The place values for these two bytes don't include the control bits, so this binary value when converted into base 10 is 937, and in hexadecimal it's 3A9. The Unicode value U plus 03A9 happens to be the code point for the capital Greek letter Omega. Three byte characters include characters for almost all modern languages, the so-called Basic Multilingual Plane or BMP for short. 
These languages include Japanese, Chinese and Korean, not to mention quite a few other characters. For a three-byte character, the first byte begins with the control bits 1110, and each of the next two bytes begins with 10. As before, the place values for each byte don't include the control bits, so this example is 9835 in base 10, which is 266B in hexadecimal. This happens to be a musical note. UTF-8 can also encode characters using four bytes, including various historical scripts, symbols from the fields of mathematics and science, and even emojis. In this table, you can see a summary of the UTF-8 formats. With a single byte, there are seven bits available for character encoding, allowing for a total of 128 unique code points. This is where the backwards compatibility with ASCII comes from. With two bytes, there are 11 bits available. With three bytes, there are 16 bits available. And with four bytes, a further 21 bits. Now, you might be tempted to add together 2 to the power 7, 2 to the power 11, 2 to the power 16, and 2 to the power 21, and conclude that there are 2.6 million possible code points. But the truth is, only the shortest possible sequence of bits is allowed for any particular code point. So, for example, the code point for the capital letter A occupies one byte. But you're not allowed to encode it with three bytes, like this. Nevertheless, the theoretical maximum number of characters available with UTF-8 is well over a million, and less than half of that space is currently in use. So, to summarise, ASCII is a 7-bit encoding system for a limited number of characters. Extended ASCII resulted in lots of incompatible code pages. Unicode allows every character in every written language to be encoded. Unicode is backwards compatible with ASCII. Unicode is space efficient because the Unicode transformation format, UTF-8, uses one, two, three, or four bytes, depending on the character. And these days, Unicode is supported by all major operating systems, search engines, browsers, laptops, and smartphones, not to mention the internet and the World Wide Web. Technologies such as URLs, HTML, CSS, XML, and JavaScript's lightweight data format, JSON, have all embraced the Unicode standard.